in the old days, you don't get much tourists. Uh, so it's something that's uh, a wonderful experience just to escape from the city. You know, it's not far from the city, but it's somewhere where once you go up, it's a whole different world. This area is almost like a so-called a jewel in the southern part of Singapore now. So it's very peaceful and the air is fresh and clean. So you can really find your me time. So I come out to Mount Faber almost daily. It's a regular exercise spot for me. Once I cross the Telok Blangah Rice Road, right, that, that long stretch, it becomes very quiet. The whole place changed. So from a very buzzing, noisy uh, environment, um, you become very calm and quiet. It's just fresh air here. I think it's a perfect location. No? <laughs> So on, on Panda Road, uh, there, there are a very interesting set of houses. Uh, these are what I would call uh, two black and white houses. You know, there are people who, who do that, you know, who want to live in a place because it's so rich in, in the past, so rich in his, history. Uh, and I think it's hard maybe for us to understand because uh, maybe we don't appreciate the past as much as these people do. We love the idea of living in a landed property and in one that had history. So um, that was our introduction to Pender Road. I have lived in Singapore in the 90s. Uh, when I first arrived in Singapore to teach as part of the Australian International School, I met my husband while I was living and working here and um, we got married in the next door neighbor's house um, back in 94. I think it's the, the openness of the structure, the uh, fact that you can open all the shutters, both top and bottom, and you can feel like you're living through in the canopy and just seeing the squirrels and watching the weather come through and the mould. You, you, you can actually see now we are standing at the, the mouth of the Henderson Waves area. This previously was the entire hillock. There's no bridge here. So every now and then when you want to go across to the other side, you can track along the mountain track, you know, the, the, the track. Yeah, I was living in the old, uh, they call it the uh, squatter area, you know, squatter. Way back in the 1950s and all those. We stay in the squatter area, adapt houses. So now you can see a lot of modern houses coming up, you know. So, uh, run down things during our time when I was a small boy. Until today, we see a lot of changes. So, to maintain old places is quite difficult. But I think for uh, many of the various agencies, um, I think they find some reason to use it. So uh, I think what we see of Alcaf Mansion today is, looks huge. Uh, really looks, uh, you know, uh, palatial. Being high up, you had this exclusive view. And uh, this mansion itself had this wonderful view of the west coastline, wonderful view of the harbour. I think you, you will agree with me, it's a very nice place to have things like these, company events, uh, corporate events, uh, and a very nice place to dine. So I thought it does really make sense to repurpose something like the Alcaf into a dining establishment. If you imagine in the old days, uh, not, not many people could afford to live high. Being on an elevation, it also signifies that kind of wealth and grandeur. You know, a space that is living is uh, much easier to maintain than a space that is vacated. So I, I think that's really what's important, you know, that they find a use to maybe 
even people like the public coming in, um, appreciating them and finding uh, a tenant who could use it in a meaningful way. I mean, I feel very privileged to live here. I, um, I love the fact that Singapore has held on to some of its heritage. Um, and this is Singapore's heritage. And while I'm a caretaker of it, um, I'm, I'm privileged in that respect. And so to be selfish and greedy to keep it to yourself. It's a labour of love here. Um, I, I think in the days gone by, you would definitely need staff and um, we don't have staff, I am the staff. Um, upkeep, they're very big gardens, so you need to be a keen and avid gardener. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Being near to Mount Faber, very close to all the parks here, uh, helps to um, instill a love of nature in my son as well, I suppose. Thanks to Facebook post uh, memory, right? Uh, yeah, it kind of like turned out on my feet today. That's our first trip. His first trip up Mount Faber. 12 years ago. Today. I think I was very pregnant with one of my first two children. And I had a beautiful old Indian lady who came to the front door and just knocked on the door. And she just wanted to share a story of her memory in the house, which I, I thought was lovely because the layers of living here are only our history, which is very short term. I sit uh, frequently three times a week for the past 40 years. It's uh, so-called peaceful and calm. All right. uh, myself, I like uh, the so-called the, the morning calm. Every time I come out, I still remember my small boy time. Eh? A very special thing that you always remember. Eh? Every now and then when we play to run, we will carry our bag up here. A few of our friends who will start to walk all the way to the other side of uh, Toro Blanga Hill Park. So what we do, I think one, three of us, three of us. We will hang the tree, uh, the bag around the tree. And then we start walking the free hand. Uh, by the time we finish the walking, we don't know where we put our bag. We, we, we cannot remember where we because the trees are all the same. So we finally we could not find the bag. So people uh, become a very important aspect of it because it's the personal stories that very often make a place come alive. <laughs>